Okay, so I've been away on holiday for a few weeks, hence the lack of content. Plus, I've been really busy at work. Now, whilst I was away, um, I went to the States, went to Florida, um, not been back there for two years. Uh, obviously, last time I had a heart attack, so we'll get into a bit of that later. But whilst I was there, not only did I do the usual bit of watch spotting, but I also tried a few pieces on, because why wouldn't you? So let's have a meander around the little holiday, some thoughts on my health and maybe some of the anxieties I had going over there, but focus more on those watches. I'm Andy and welcome to the English Watch. Now this channel is about me and my watch collecting journey, an amateur enthusiast with an eye for detail, helping like-minded individuals like you start your watch collecting journey. Now if you like this video why not give it a thumbs up and while you're there why not subscribe. Right let's get the the anxiety bit out of the way first. Now last time I went to Florida which was 2022 supposed to be the last big hurrah um, I actually had a heart attack um, within within the first week. Not a great experience although it was because I was in the United States so if you're gonna have a heart attack go there Make sure you have insurance though. So I was a little bit apprehensive about going back. Uh, this was like a rerun of the, you know, the last big family holiday before my kids bugger off from home. One of which has already done that, which I'm glad to say. And it, I have to say, it wasn't until we went back to the water park, at Volcano Bay, the Universal Water Park, where it all unfolded. Uh, and um, we went back to see Jim on the reception there, who uh, he's one of the medical uh, response guys. And... After uh, we tried to explain who we were, and obviously two years later, yeah, why wouldn't he remember this uh, pale, wet, limey with a sore chest? Uh, he did actually remember, uh, so we had a good chat, uh, and it was really good to, I guess, a for me to discuss um, my you know, re recovery you know, for, to full health. I'm, I hasten to add, but also for him to um, to hear back the story uh, about how I made it. Um, my premium experience that I had not only with Universal at the time but also with the Dr Phillips uh, hospital nearby um, so it must be nice for them to see the patients come back so that that for me did settle the holiday down uh, quite nicely so we did do that in the first few days but I have to say I was dead anxious going there because you know you got this thing in the back of your mind where you're sort of reliving experiences but all's well that ended well anyway this time we were able to do far more than we did last time. There's only so much you can do from a hospital bed and then a wheelchair. Um, so yeah, we did the Andretti karting, which is fantastic. And also something I've never done before, which is uh, go on a gun range. So I'll stick a little video in the corner there that shows me firing, I think some nine millimeter semi-automatic pistol. Oh, I mean, it was amazing. I mean, it's funny cause my youngest, he was all full Call of Duty mode. Um, my oldest, he enjoyed it, but because it's additional maturity, and I felt a similar way in terms of the enormity of what you're doing, because these things are quite powerful, and I'm not anti-gun by any stretch, I, I really enjoyed it, but shooting this weapon just made me feel, I don't know, it was, it was a weird feeling anyway, um, but anyway, my wife even enjoyed it as well, because she saw some girls doing it, so I highly recommend it. And I think, if anything, it, it helps cement your relationship with firearms uh, and those types of things because it's easy to look on films of people shooting stuff off, but when you actually feel the power of the thing in your hand, it's quite, I don't know, it's quite a daunting thing. Anyway, great fun. Whilst I was there, might I'll get into it, I wore my Planet Ocean every day except in the water park, which was two days. And I have to say, um, I did start timing this and over or written down there, 16 days that I've been wearing it straight. It only gained five seconds. So, what a great, great holiday watch this. I, I just utterly love it. So after the last Planet Ocean video, I've had quite a few people write in who have also you know, enjoyed the Planet Ocean. It's nice to see the Planet Ocean faithful out there. And you never know, soon we might get a replacement. But I'll be holding on to this one. Anyway, so watch spotting. Um, so we went... Um, we went round the Universal Park, didn't do Disney this year. Disney not getting any of my money. Too expensive and there's not much to see there, to be honest. 
uh, but Universal was always a good uh, good experience. And I have to say, mostly um, there were, I guess, fitness watches. A lot of people didn't wear a watch at all. There are a few gentlemen that wore, shall we say, rather extravagant, large, shiny pieces of, I don't know if they were watches or just look like, I don't know. I did take a sneaky picture of one. So if I remember to put that in, I'll put that in, which is quite amusing. Uh, I think this is big, but Christ the bike, this thing was massive. But, you know, each to their own. Now, the only place I really saw um, watches of, on call of note, you know, luxury watches, expensive watches, uh, was in the local shopping mall. Now, it was a quite high-end mall, nice mall, had all the watch boutiques in there. And there were guys walking around in there with gold day dates, Daytonas. In fact, actually, you know, I did see a guy in the park with a with a Dayton. It was at the steel bezel. It was an older one, but needs to say he was perfectly happy, sort of bashing that around on the roller coasters. And when I went into the uh, Rolex boutique in this mall, uh, the very accommodating. Yeah, let me try on a few pieces. In fact, it was at that point where I think I finally decided that the forty-one millimeter date just on an oyster that is is too big for me and i have had a couple of calls for both blue dial and the gray dial from various dealers and i'm like nah nice but if it's just too big uh, it just wears too big on my wrist um but anyway i was talking to uh the 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 manager in the store and i got talked about watch theft I said, I've seen yeah, a few people wearing yeah, gold Rolexes around. He says, do you have any, have, have any trouble around here? And he's like, mate, this is Florida. He says, yeah, if you go to California, you know, you're going to get your arm cut off or they're going to get robbed. And they, you, those guys, they might get a slap on the wrist. But he says, if you mess around in this state, it ain't going to end well. So people tend not to... Uh, still watches now i'm not saying it doesn't happen but i got the impression that florida and probably other states were much safer and you had a better chance of retaining your possessions i mean we felt dead safe the whole time we were there in fact we were in um we went into this shop in uh one of the, the older towns in florida called san augustine it's an old spanish settlement and uh there was a guy in the, in this, uh, it was a beef jerky shop, because I was going to buy some beef jerky for my brother, because he loves it, the spicier the better. And it's turned out this guy, he was in his 70s, he was an old hippie, he'd been a DJ, he'd lived in London, he had like the the, the bleach blonde hair, but he looked, who'd he look like? Um, Iggy Pop. Um, and we got talking, we had a whole, you know, at half an hour with the guy talking about this that and the other i think he met fleetwood mac and he's talking about the 70s and the 60s i'm like you know i just want some beef jerky but it, it was good conversation uh and he mentioned that you know people feel safe you know a lot of people are carrying weapons uh so and i don't know if that, it was a weird one because that's i don't think that's why people are safe because everyone's um loaded but um yeah he said Florida is its own thing. Um, yeah, it's, it's not the same as the rest of the state. I can't speak for the rest of the states. Uh, I've been to other parts, but it'd be interesting to hear your thoughts and comments. Um, I thought it was, it, was, it was we had a few interesting conversations. Let's put it that way. Anyway, so so I did go in the Rolex dealer. They had literally nothing in there. Uh, they had a couple of dates, just forty ones, which I had said didn't didn't do anything for me. But I did go into this uh, watch dealer in Disney Springs, which I did go in two years before and try a Zenith Chronomaster Sport black dial, which I did like. Now, I was having a thing for small chronographs. Now, I've got big, bigger chronograph, uh, Speedmaster. Um, but I've tried the Zenith Alpamiro Chronomaster 38 on a few times, and I kind of like it. I like the, the shadow, you know, the, the titanium one, but I like the original as well. So I thought what I'd do is try that one on, but first I was going to try on the one of the tag uh, Hoya Carreras uh, 39mm. Now, the one I tried on was uh, Black Dial. It had the date at the 12 o'clock, which I didn't hate. I thought that was quirky, and it you know, kept the dial symmetrical. 
But I have to say, for what was it retailing? It's five thousand nine hundred pounds. I can't remember how much it was in dollars. Um, and I'll come on to something on that in a second because there was an opportunity. But yeah, five thousand nine hundred pounds. Um, I thought it was nice. Maybe a little bit too thick. It's about fourteen millimeters. Um, I always find with some of the tags, uh, I've got nothing against them. You know, there's, they've got a massive following. Um, and their price point, yeah, it is what it is. It's now sort of, I guess, jockeying with, with Tudor. Um, but I always find them as under refined. Let's just put it that way. So anyway, I then tried on the Tudor, not the Tudor. I then tried on the Zenith. I did try some Tudors on at the airport, but we don't need to go there. Um, and the Zenith fit perfectly. It was a little bit smaller, but it was so much thinner. So I think the Zenith is about 12 millimeters, about two millimeters thinner. Um, and it's incredible how much difference having that compact integrated chronograph versus um, maybe the tags are a, a modular chronograph, not too sure. But you could really tell where the value was in the Zenith versus the tag. Now, the Zenith retails at £8,800 in the UK, which for me is a little on the high side. And although that watch is definitely on my short list, not at that full retail price it isn't. So I may be having a chat with my friends at Chrono Hunter or maybe I'll be scouring the internet. So we then got to the Omega Boutique and, now, and in the same mall that we um, saw the Rolex in. I went in there a couple of times uh, because they had the black uh, Aquaterra, you know, the new Aquaterra with the glossy black dial. And I did do um, a little bit of a video on it l last month, I think. Um, and I hadn't seen it in the flesh. I'd only seen pictures. And I wasn't too sure whether the case was exactly the same as the shades or whether it had brushed and polished elements. Now... It's exactly the same as the Shades edition, so it's a polished case. The bracelet is brushed and polished, albeit the brushing is very um, light. But what this watch does have, uh, and I tried the 38 mm on which for me was perfect, was the dial was absolutely to die for. I, I mean, this watch, the, it, yeah, it was the old chef's kiss for me. Very nice, and it had the little adjustable clasp which yeah it was a little bit noddy but hey it works i mean yeah it's, it's a step forward isn't it but the dial combination the size the thickness wasn't an issue at all because you know omega used that sort of mid-case design which sort of cheats a little bit of the height i thought it was fantastic now i said to the lady said how much is this one and i can't remember what their rrp was but with their local sales tax it was about seven thousand dollars now, when you take into account the exchange rate, which was about $1.27 to the pound, it works out about oh, like £5,500. Now, considering the watch retails for 6200 here, well, ooh, that's close. But then, yeah, do you want the hassle of <clears throat> bringing it in, being naughty with customs, which I don't recommend at all. Yeah, yes, we ought to pay our taxes, even though you'd have to pay it twice. But there you go. So, at, again, at some point, I can see this one uh, joining the list. But again, not at £6,200. I suspect, again, there's an avenue to get that one in um, under that. I also tried on the Speedmaster Steel and Sedna Gold, so the two-tone, uh, the Pandon. I thought that was lovely, really nice combination, massively expensive, seventeen grand. Uh, maybe it'd be nice if it you could just have it on a rubber so it'd be a bit cheaper but you still get that sort of two-tone aspect um maybe they'll introduce that one at some point but yeah lovely watch so yes i've been away for a few weeks i've probably crammed a load of stuff uh together in one video but yeah it's a bit of a ramble my thoughts over the last uh, two or three weeks um and hey look at the suntan i've got you know. <laughs> i don't go that brown i've got a nice tinge i can tell i've been away there's almost a I took my watch off and almost a white patch on my arm. Um, but sadly, this Celtic pasty skin, I think this is as good as it gets. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. I'm Andy, this has been Lean's Watch. Take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.